Are you there? Yes. I apologize. I was just getting started. So this is <laughs> Chelsea Simpson with the National Farm to School Network. Welcome to our Lunch Bites webinar series. Our webinars are held on the second Tuesday of every month at 12 p.m. Central Time. Our webinar presentations are just 20 minutes long, followed by a short Q&A session. Unfortunately, today's Q&A session will not be recorded because of a technical difficulty. This is actually a re-recording of the original webinar. If you have questions about this webinar, there will be a, um, an email address presented at the end, or you can email chelsea at farmtoschool.org. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-Y at farmtoschool.org. Um, the Farm to School website will also be listed at the end of the webinar, which is farmtoschool.org. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so it can be archived on our website. Uh, today's webinar is Farm to School and Farm-Based Education. Our presenter today is Erica Curry, who works for Shelburne Farms in Vermont. Her work focuses on supporting Farm to School and Farm-Based Education, networking nationally and throughout the Northeast region. She is the Northeast Regional Lead for the National Farm to School Network and the Program Coordinator for the Farm-Based Education Center. She also works for Vermont Feed. Erica's background includes a decade of working with communities to develop connections between farms, schools, and community members. Erica has led multi-day workshops and courses focusing on farm-based education, farm-to-school, and place-based place education. Erica, take it away. Great. Thanks, Chelsea. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, this is a really exciting webinar and opportunity because this is the first time we're bringing together the farm-based education and national farm-to-school networks. So one of the goals of this webinar is to really familiarize folks in these networks um, about what each network does. To give you an overview of the webinar, we'll be talking about developing some common definitions for farm-to-school and farm-based education. And then we're going to really dig deeper into the idea of how do you develop farm-based education programs that support farm-to-school goals. And really, the, the, we'll have this webinar be kind of a bird's eye view of these topics, It'll kind of be a tip of the iceberg. And we really hope that this is a start to a the beginning of a conversation, we can really continue the conversation through both of these networks um, ongoing. All right, so the first slide is just showing that there are two networks in the audience. And again, the goal to familiarize everyone with each network. Um, we'd like to introduce the idea that the National Farm to School Network and the Farm Based Education Association really share um, similar goals and mission in that there's some overlap in that there's the idea of supporting local agriculture supporting healthy kids, and supporting strong communities. And we'd really like to explore the synergy between both of these communities. And our goal is to help strengthen the synergy and learn from each other, explore how we can continue to support all of this really important work. Both of these networks are national networks, and they're both free to join. So I encourage everyone to look at the websites there, the Farm to School and Farm Based Education, and, and join these both of these networks and, um, as a way to really tap into continued dialogue. So I wanted to give everyone a brief snapshot of both of these networks, and we'll start with the National Farm to School Network. So this is a, um, a, a network that supports national school, and, and the way that it does that is that the country is split up into eight regions, and there is a regional lead for each region and a state lead. And state leads work to really then work on the local level, knowing that farm to school is a very local movement and that um, each program looks different but that there's also some of these national opportunities that we have to work on farm to school. So for instance, policy, we're currently working on the Farm Bill. Um, most recently, we had the first ever National Farm to School Month, which is October. We'll have that every October. There is um, evaluation support. And um, we have an upcoming really exciting opportunity that the National Farm to Cafeteria Conference is happening in Burlington, Vermont this coming August. So we really hope everyone can join us here in Burlington and and um, come and we'll have some face-to-face -face time to continue to talk about farm to school across the country. The next slide talks about the Farm-Based Education Association. And this network was established in 2006 really with the idea to provide an opportunity for people that work in farm-based education to connect and um, share information. And we do that through our website. There's a lot of activity on the Farm-Based Education website. Again, it's free to join. Um, if you have a job that you'd like to post or if you're looking for a job, it's a great place. Our jobs postings are very active. There's also workshops and um, this a discussion forum where you can post a question. And we also have um, a national conference every other year. We just had our conference last November. So um, 
encourage everyone to check out these networks and, and join them. And then we're going to move to the idea of who is in this network and, and is this a good network for you? And the idea is yes, anyone who's interested in making connections between farms and schools and teaching people about agriculture, please join. And um, these are people that are farm-based educators, teachers, parents, community, elders, activists, you know, healthcare professionals, a lot of folks. Um, anyone and everyone is welcome to join, and both of these networks offer, to offer different opportunities for supporting all of our work. Now I'd like to move to talking about definitions of farm-to-school and farm-based education. And I really um, wanted to touch on this because, as we know, every farm and school and community is unique and, and different. And since there's so many people on this webinar that have a variety of backgrounds and approaches to this work, I really wanted to be sure to define what I mean when I say farm to school and farm based education. So for the sake of common language, uh, let's quickly define these terms and um, give an overview. So when I think of farm to school, different elements that I think of are listed on this next slide. And so some of those elements are taste tests and um, working in the cafeteria, sourcing local food from um, local farms, teaching about food and nutrition and farming topics in the classroom, and then also field trips um, to a farm, and that's where farm-based education comes in. And um, so an example of a farm-to-school program that I think is really great and encompasses a lot of these is um, Sharon Vermont. And that's a school, just as an example, that is doing taste testing. Um, each classroom has a taste test that they sign up for every month. They have a farmer's market in their cafeteria as a way to really bring agriculture in their community into the school. They have harvest days, so those are field days where the kids are out in the fields and they're doing education activities around food and agriculture. Their food service director is sourcing local food and working in their school garden, very hands-on. They have a farmer correspondence program where they're writing letters to farmers during the off season to try to maintain that agriculture connection in the winter. And as I mentioned earlier, they're also taking trips to farms. So that's a program that's pretty well established and has been around for a while. But there are also programs that are just starting out or anywhere in between and might just be starting with taste tests or might just be starting with sourcing one local product into the cafeteria. And there are multiple um, ways to build off of that. Um, so farm-based education. So that is similar idea in that there are concepts listed on the screen now. They're hands-on and experiential and there are many different elements of farm-based education programs. But what I really wanted to um, mention here is the idea that there are many different farms that you can connect with for education opportunities. And some of those are smaller, diversified vegetable operations. Some of them are dairy farms. Some of them are orchards. Or some are farm-based education centers that have a staff and you know, they're a nonprofit with a mission to um, provide educational opportunities. There are often urban farms that have really fantastic education programs and opportunities. So for an idea about what are the types of places that have education programs and what kind of farms, I encourage everyone to go to the Farm-Based Education website to check out the folks that are in that network that, um, that you can highlight some of the programs by looking at who's in the network and learn more that way. But just a taste of it is that some of these um, programs are field trips, family programs, festivals, summer camps. Um, there are a lot of partnership programs with the local library. There, there's anything under the sun you can do on a farm and a um, wide variety of education programs that are a good fit for that particular farm, that community, and, and that school. So the next slide is thinking about how, how do these all fit together? How do farm-based education, farm-to-school really um, complement each other? So this is a model that comes from a program called Vermont Feed, which is a program in Vermont that supports farm-to-school efforts throughout the state. And when you look at this model, please note the three C's. There's the community, the classroom, and the cafeteria. And what we found is that uh, throughout the years, our observation has been that programs that really are successful in the long term include all of these elements, um, the community, the classroom, and the cafeteria into their farm to school program. So let's first start with focusing on the cafeteria. And so if you look at that C, you can think about the idea of a food service director sourcing local food or um, working with getting kids into the cafeteria to become familiar with that space and um, with the food service uh, folks connecting with farmers you know, to, look, 
to look at bringing local product into the cafeteria. The classroom C might entail um, cooking in the classroom, it might be teaching food and farming topics in the classroom, it might be taking students into the cafeteria. There are professional development opportunities that we really encourage for all of these staff, both teachers and food service, to familiarize them with working with um, local product and teaching these topics. But let's now move to that third C, the community. And this is really where I think about farm-based education um, as an opportunity to work with a farm-to-school program. So think about connecting that community C with the classroom. That's where the potential is. Um, the community and the, and the farm are really a great resource for teachers to learn about, um, or to, to teach students about learning about where their food comes from. So they may be eating local product in the cafeteria and learning about it in the classroom or on their school garden. But this farm visit is a way to make a direct connection and really see in real life where food comes from before it's on their plates and see that kind of production scale agriculture. So this is what we're going to talk more about now is that idea of connecting farm to school programs um, through the community C out of that model. So thinking about the power of kids on farms in this next slide. So if you're on this webinar, you probably already have a passion about these ideas and you understand you know, in your heart why it's important, why we want to have kids um, know about what it's like to pick a tomato off the vine or, or pick corn or plant a seed or, or hold a chicken. And we know that there's power when a, a child's on a farm and really sees how a farm operates, meets a farmer, um, you know, sees a tractor, walks in a greenhouse, smells that smell of the soil. We all know this is important, but let's transition to the idea of we know it's important, but how can we show that it's important? This next slide is titled, Why Do, Why do It? So how do we make a case? Why is this important? Why do we care about this? There's often a need to justify farm-based education programs or even farm-to-school programs. And that might be to your school board, it might be to your principal, maybe the parents, community members, maybe your colleagues, maybe other teachers. So why is it worth our time? And what I have listed here are some um, results from some, some summarized studies. And these are compiled by a woman um, named Louise Chala, who works at the University of Colorado. And there's a handout she has called The Benefits of Gardening for Children. And um, these just show some of the really positive impacts that happen after kids are on farms. So you can kind of have this in your back pocket if you're thinking of how you can answer that question, why is it important? Another thing I wanted to mention is that um, recently in Vermont, we had funding through the Centers for Disease Control to do some evaluation where we looked at um, kids in farm-to-school programs, and we found that nearly 80% of the kids in farm-to-school programs reported knowing a farmer in the state of Vermont. And this analysis was really exciting in that it suggests that students who reported knowing a farmer had better attitudes towards fruit and vegetables and reported higher consumption of fruits and vegetables than students who did not. So the results are you know, pre preliminary and we're working on further research, but um, it's really exciting that we can essentially be begin to assume that generally students who know farmers are exposed to opportunities to learn on farms and have experiences that impact their, their behavior positively. Now we know that knowing a farmer isn't necessarily um, like a magic bullet, but we can say that that's a great first step and really look at that as a key part of a farm to school program. So the research does exist and if you're needing um, something sort of backup making that case, why do it? Just know that there's, there's research out there that, that this um, has been looked into already. So the next slide is thinking about what to keep in mind and we're going to transition into the ideas of sort of the very basics when you're starting to think about developing a farm to school, farm based education program in connecting your farm to school program. So bridging two cultures. Um, this really, I wanted to start with the idea that we're essentially taking two different cultures here and we're merging them together with these farm-based education field trips. And this slide has photos of farmers, or I'm sorry, teachers on farms learning about farms and becoming familiar. So you have some teachers interacting with the animals. You've got cows and goats there and some teachers in a greenhouse. And really that's sort of the basic idea that these are two different worlds and we all have our own comfort zones and really try to be open-minded and have a lot of patience when you're first taking these steps and that we all come in from different perspectives and I'm really thinking about the farmer needing to kind of learn teacher language in a sense and teachers needing to kind of think like a farmer. 
um, you know, maybe farmer hasn't stepped into a school for years, and maybe some teachers have never even been on a farm, and, and they're, you know, interested in taking their students there. So it's all about trying to get people comfortable and a little bit out of their comfort zones as well. Um, both of these folks have limited time, teachers and farmers and everyone in between, and so thinking about, all right, if I'm a farmer and I'm wanting to contact a teacher, when's the best time to do that? Maybe during recess or before school or after school. And same thing if you're a teacher connecting a farmer. You know, farmers are hard to get a hold of. They're outside a lot. So be persistent and, um, and be creative. The next slide is talking about communication and expectations. And this seems like a really basic thing, but never underestimate the importance of communication and really starting from square one. So thinking about, all right, we're going to set this experience up. Who's in charge? Is it the teacher? Is it the, the farmer? Is it the parent? Is it the chaperones? You know, who's making, who's making the calls here? Who's calling the shots? If, if there's bad weather, is it the teacher saying, um, yep, the weather looks too bad to take my kids on the farm? Or is it the farmer saying, oops, sorry, it's not going to work for me. You know, the fields are going to be too muddy. Um, you know, I've had experiences where we've got a bunch of kids that, are, are there in the rain because the teacher thought the farmer was canceling, the farmer thought the teacher was canceling, and you know, we make the most of it, but really try to have an ideal experience starts with great communication. Um, also thinking about uh, the cost and, and trying to value everyone's time. So are you charging this, this, um, for this experience if you're a farmer, and how much are you able to pay if you're a teacher coming from the teacher's perspective? Um, you know, we all want to value our time. And then the other big thing is thinking about, you know, things go wrong on a farm. A, work, a real working farm has unanticipated <laughs> events that occur. Maybe the tractor breaks down and, and trying to just be um, adaptive as you can and, and thinking about that. And really, really being clear, is the goal of the field trip to um, have just a basic tour of the farm or is the goal to really go in depth about one topic, you know, maybe cycles or soil? We'll talk about that more in a bit. So that transi transitions us into curriculum connections. So this is an incredibly important topic for us to think about when we're, we're trying to bridge the farm-based education and farm-to-school worlds together. Um, there's really limited time for teachers um, these days, you know, as there are, is for farmers, but specifically there's a lot of um, things that teachers have on their plates and they have to meet these curriculum goals. So I'd encourage you all to really think about looking at Having a trip to a farm not necessarily be presented as an add-on or something extra that the teacher needs to do, but as something that can help meet the teacher meet the goals that they already have. So one, one um, way to do that is to think about what's already being taught in the classroom. Really become familiar. What are the great expectations, standards? What's the curriculum framework that's being used in the school? We have the common core that's coming up for some states. How does this relate to the curriculum concepts that the teacher is trying to teach and what you have offered on your farm? It's really tempting to associate um, food and farming and nutrition um, education with farms primarily through science and science standards, but think outside the box a little bit. Think about literacy, think about math, think about social studies. Um, you know, teachers really value opportunities to teach these in real-world contexts. So a farm is a fantastic place to do that, you know, to really look at the math and measurement and, um, and these skills. We often also jump to conceptual and content standards when we're thinking about what can be taught on a farm and we think about what students are learning, for instance, energy flow, economic systems, but also think about how students are learning. So you might want to think about um, process skills and um, thinking about inquiry-based opportunities on the farm. So, so how the students are learning is just as important for many teachers um, as what they're learning. Think about asking questions and allowing students to make observations, pose hypotheses, and really look at testing theories on a farm. And, and go deep here. Offer these opportunities and um, you know, really think about the farm as you would any other classroom to provide these opportunities for education. The next slide goes to you know, thinking about the big picture. We've talked about some of the specific details of curriculum. Now we're going to zoom out for a minute. And really, it's easy to get bogged down in thinking about, OK, I've got to you know, cover x, y, z in this one field trip. But in the end of the day, I often find myself needing you know, to remember that the 
primary goal is for students to have a positive experience on farms. We want students to have a positive association with agriculture, and we want students to want to go back to the uh, back to the farms, and maybe even think about becoming a farmer. It's such a fantastic place. Hey, I want to do that as a job when I grow up. What a great thing. The other piece, too, is that we, of course, want to have farmers, want to have um, students and teachers back. So it's good for you know, a good experience to the farmer, and also we want teachers to feel comfortable. So this goes back to that communication and just sort of the overall tone that you're setting, whether you're a teacher or a farmer and um, when you're going into this experience. Part of that is also remembering not to do too much. We all have sort of that, that natural inclination to try to fit a lot in, but the farm itself can teach. Just being there, smelling, smelling what it smells like and seeing it and interacting. Um, just even the fact that kids are on a farm is very powerful. And this really leads us to the idea of remembering that every student is unique, no matter what their age or their background, and, and keeping that in mind that there's lots of different social and ethnic and cultural traditions and communication styles that we all have. And um, while you're thinking about setting up the opportunity on the farm or teaching or what the content is you're teaching, keep all of these things in mind. You know, we have certain things that we could think of teaching tips with ages and stages developmentally that um, are good to refer back to. You know, thinking, remembering every student is unique, but there's also sort of a framework that can help guide you. For instance, if you've never worked with kindergarten students, or maybe it's been years, maybe you talk to a kindergarten teacher, or maybe you refer to something just as a reminder to, okay, I remember kindergarten students are you know, very physically active, they have short attention spans, that's where I need to um, have my mind today. If you're working with older kids, high school students or middle school, will be more opportunity for conversation and a little bit more depth in what you're doing. So kind of have that refresher. And, and um, you know, if you were planning on teaching about life cycles or pollination cycles, maybe if you've got a kindergarten group, you're just focusing on the flower, or you're just focusing on the bee, and you know, you're looking at it through a different lens in a little bit more basic way. All right, the next slide is safety. And, and this is really important. I, I, we could have a webinar just within itself on safety, but always remember to keep this in mind. You know, there's the basics of is the electric fence turned off? Are there interactions with animals? How are we going to have those interactions be positive? You know, what's the student chaperone ratio? Where, what am I keeping in mind for um, where the kids are? Where's the safe place? Where are places that are off limits? What's the emergency plan? What if there's bad weather or an accident? Um, you know, bathrooms, hand washing stations, all of those logistics are really important to keep in mind. But the other thing I wanted to emphasize here is thinking, um, remembering students with special needs. I'm really thinking about how the trip can be safe and fun and accessible for all students. And if you have a student that has, you know, potentially accessibility issues, special needs, thinking about how you can have that experience be a positive experience for a student that might not be able to participate in all activities that you have planned for the day. So that certainly relates to keeping everyone safe and. Um, having a positive experience on the farm. So we'll move into types of programs. And again, today I'm not talking about specific case studies. We could also do um, that topic in a later webinar. But um, when you are creating programming, some of the first things to keep in mind is breadth or depth. And that goes back to the idea that you know some programs or some field trips are just one time, one, once a year, we're getting the kids out to the farm. And, and some of them, there's opportunity for multiple visits and more depth. And, and both of these experiences um, are important. But consider the potential um, and you know, the, the benefits that may have for going a little bit deeper. For instance, if students are um, there only for one visit, and maybe it's in the spring and they're planting something, working with the teacher to say, OK, so next fall, we'd love to have the students be able to have the opportunity to come back and harvest some of what they planted. And, and that might entail working with um, a new teacher because the kids are in a different grade the next year. We're really trying to go that extra effort and have some creativity and thinking about the experience that students are having and trying to have as much depth as possible with that experience. Um, so for instance, you, know, you might be developing a program. And, and some programs, for instance, harvesting vegetables or milking a cow are great for all ages. But you might not want to get into, for instance, trait selection in animal breeding or a topic like that um, unless you have some older kids. So you might have one program that you can adapt depending on when the kids are there. Another piece is knowing the school calendar and 
really um, developing opportunities to tap into that. You maybe you have family programs when kids aren't in school and parents want to be able to go back to the farm that their student previously visited. Um, but this time they'll do it during a, a vacation of some type. And always keep in mind partnership opportunities. There's fantastic programs that have come out of partnerships with libraries, um, working with master gardeners. Always access, you know, your extension service might be a great resource. Um, think outside in the community. You know, there's really, um, my perspective is everyone's um, can contribute something, some knowledge, um, seed saving, food preservation, whatever it might be. Maybe it's even a shovel. People can really contribute. So I wanted to wrap up with next steps and thinking about what are some action um, steps that you can take right now after you're done listening to the webinar. And wanted to reiterate the idea of think outside the box when you're thinking about farms to visit. If you're a teacher, think about connecting to some of those farms that might be in your community that might not already have a program and might just need that extra little nudge of somebody interested to help propel them forward. You know, maybe it's they grow one crop, they're just growing pumpkins or Maybe they're raising goats for, you know, milking goats for goat cheese, whatever it might be. Um, maybe it's an orchard across the street that nobody's been to for years. Just Those are all really fantastic connections with agriculture, and we can work with making opportunities for our students to um, connect with those farms. And for if you're a farmer or a farmist educator, I wanted to encourage folks to really know what the Farm to School program is. Become familiar with that with your schools, with your local schools, your school districts, and specific classrooms and teachers. Get to know what they're doing and really offer opportunities that are complementary to the goals that the school already has. So really think about meeting each other halfway when you're working on developing these partnerships. Um, often finding a teacher advocate is a really powerful way to um, help support farm to school programs and farm based field trips. If there's one teacher that's going to a farm and that's having a great time, we often find that more teachers are going to be interested in and that one teacher can be the voice for um, this opportunity to spread the word for the rest of the school. Um, I'd encourage people on um, farms to host a teacher afternoon on the farm and really kind of almost an open house. You can work with um, having that be you know, a more formalized opportunity as well. You can work with a local curriculum coordinator to say, hey, you know, there's sort of a teacher workshop um, requirements throughout the year. Can I work with you to develop one of the workshops um, to be offered on my farm? And so teachers attend that opportunity and they get credit hours to be on your farm to learn about how to access your farm as an educational resource. It's really incentivizing for teachers to look at your farm as part of what they would normally do within um, their programming. Um, so making the case, just remember, why is this important? Go back to the basics. How is this supportive? Um, I haven't mentioned yet wellness policies. That's a great entry point. If you're a farmer or a farm-based educator, every school is required to have a wellness policy. That's a great way for you to say, hey, you know, my farm is a great way for you to teach about local food and, and, and being active and having the kids active on my farm. You know, how can I help support the goals that you already have with your wellness policy or your farm to school program um, by offering an opportunity on my farm? And if you're a farmer or a farm educator and you're already doing this, mentor other farmers and farm educators. Spread the word. Share the information about what you're doing. Um, no one should have to reinvent the wheel, and we really have a fantastic network here that folks can tap into and um, can really help propel this entire movement forward by supporting each other. and. Um, and sharing our information. So I'll end with that, Chelsea. And I'll mention on this last slide, actually, that there's contact information. And there's a website for Shelburne Farms and the Farm-Based Education Association, Vermont Feed, and the National Farm to School Network. And um, Vermont Feed has a wonderful tools and resources page where you can access several um, guides that might be relevant for this work. There is a guide for connecting farms to schools and communities. There's also what we call the CDC report card, which shows um, the results from our evaluation that we did um, throughout the last year. Farm Based Education Association also has fantastic resources on it, as does the National Farm to School Network. The National Farm to School Network website is a great resource for additional evaluation information if you're interested in looking at evaluating a program that you currently have. Thank you so much, Erica. Um, 
most of the questions that came in during our original webinar did have to do with resources, um, resources for referencing research and finding farmers or schools to work with. Um, so I just want to really encourage everyone to, to use the items listed here on the screen. Uh, uh, if you have a question that you think might be real specific to your area, if you go to farmtoschool.org, you'll see a map of all of the states and uh, just click on your state and you can uh, you'll find contact information for National Farm to School Network state leads. Those are point people in your area who will um, be able to, to help connect you with other people working on uh, farm to school and, and probably some farm based education type work as well. So um, uh, feel free to, to send us all your questions and thank you for uh, listening to our webinar today. Thank you Erica.